Well, Coach, for the last few weeks, you've talked about your team focusing on this game and, and leaving not being in the college football playoffs behind them. With your guys now being practicing and, and getting back to work, uh, what have you seen from them to let you know that they're in the right mindset for this week? Well, I just think the way we've practiced, uh, it started off in, in Columbus. Um, I felt like practice has been physical. Guys have been into it. There's been a lot of energy in practice. And uh, and then that continued here in, in California. Um, I think the practices have been good. They've been spirited. And I think these guys really want to play in this game. You mentioned that this will be a good opportunity with some of your key receivers opting out for some of the younger guys to get some momentum into next season. What gives you the confidence in that group that they'll be able to, to do that? Well, just the way that they practice every day. You know, we see that in practice. You know, not everybody else does. But, you know, when you think about Chris and Garrett, both of those guys, they came on late in their freshman year. But what a great opportunity for Julian Fleming and Marvin Harrison and Mecca Buka to come in and, and play really, really well and step up. And so in this game, we really want to send off the seniors the right way, but also build momentum for the younger guys. And this Utah team's a very, very good team. And, and to get this Rose Bowl victory would give us great momentum heading into the offseason and next year. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate the time. Thanks. Tiffany, Ryan, thank you. Tiffany alluded to the opt-outs, the most notable ones, at least from a statistical standpoint, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, though Nicholas T. Frere has been a mainstay on the offensive front. Haskell Garrett, a mainstay on the defensive front, and they've chosen not to play. From a schematic standpoint, the game today, I know Ohio State's got a lot of talent. What's the biggest impact of not having those four guys, particularly the receivers? Well, I think you, you look at the receivers because they're, they're dynamic, you know, mm -hmm. and they're veterans, and they played in so many big games, and they're, it, it is what it is. You can't, you can't minimize the loss there just because the next wave uh, are so gifted and so talented. I mean, you talked with Brian Hartline, the wide receiver coach, I mean, he's going to tell you, yeah, we, we love Garrett and Chris. I mean, these are once in a generation type of receivers. But we were very, very excited about to see what these next this next group of guys can do. Different type of receiver. You know, with Garrett and Chris, it was more dynamic, explosive. The next wave, I think it's more physical, bigger, stronger. Uh, I can't wait to see them, honestly. I think it, how they fit into what C.J. Stroud brings to the table. I think Ohio State may goes back to, to running the ball more, got away from that against Michigan, a little bit more, especially against Utah, uh, balanced attack. Uh, well, but those receivers, I think, have the ability. And C.J. Stroud, when he did all of his reps in the spring and he did all his reps in the fall and he grabbed all of his guys, he, he wasn't grabbing Fleming and company. Yeah. Like, he was grabbing Alave and Wilson and those guys. I mean, yeah. that's what he was trying to build. So you always worry about chemistry. You know, you had the bowl practice. That's about it to, yeah. to get ready for it. So I do expect them to be a little bit rusty. But, man, Ohio State's not lacking dudes. Like, they continue <laughs> yeah. to, to bring in guys. And, um, obviously, I think they'll, they'll be fine. But I think the physicality of Utah, I'm looking forward to seeing the challenge because Michigan gave them that work up yep. front and ran the football and ran the football. Utah wants to do the same exact yeah. thing. So get ready for it. <laughs> yeah, Utah is a physical um, outfit. And that's, um, you know, that's, that's their M.O. They want to bring physicality offensively, defensively. But I want to see about C.J. Stroud and how he approaches this game because when I spoke to C.J. at the end of the season, he said that early on when he struggled, you know, like remember the Minnesota game and Oregon game, yeah, he said that he was able to rely on the veteran re receivers to help him get through that struggle. Now he has younger receivers, and now he's a guy with a full season under his belt, so he's like the veteran guy in the offense. I want to see if he's able to make them better, because to me, Alave, Wilson, they made him better. Even if it was just mentally what they said, what they, you know, things they pointed out to him. But now he's the veteran quarterback to these younger receivers mm -hmm. in a big game in the Rose Bowl against a very physical defense and a team that wants to be here and they want to make a statement. And, 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 and once again, yeah. arguably their best receiver yeah. is still playing. In Jigba. Yeah. You know, yeah. Jigba, right. Smith right. But Jigba. those other guys, yeah. see the, oh, yeah. the yeah. veteran, you know, yep. the, the yep. experience that they were yep. able to yep. talk to and, him. And, yeah, yeah. I, I Not just a talent where, thing. Of course. Right, I, right. I, I saw something with Smith and Jigba saying, you know, he's kind of been – the younger guy, yeah. let the others lead. Yeah. And now in that room anyway, he yeah. becomes the guy. 100%. I think he potentially is going to be a tough matchup for Utah in this game. Bear, as talented as the guys you're stepping in are, how big an impact did it have those guys opting out on the line? B -b big impact. It, it went from uh, three points down. It was it was a seven-point spread, and then it dropped down to, down to four. And I, th I think most people are – expecting also that the game means everything to Utah and Ohio State uh, those players just kind of opting out and people are assuming that the game doesn't mean as much to Ohio State but yeah the, the line had a massive impact and I think in, 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 the, in the betting world that's kind of it, it, it kind of comes full circle with what you guys are talking about before with opt-outs betting bowls these days is essentially trying to 
guess the opt-out and get the best of the line. And that's what a lot of people did with Michigan State. Well, they were initially an underdog, closed to favorite. Nevada opened up as a small favorite over Western Michigan. Michigan closed, well, Western Michigan closed as like a seven-point favorite. So, like, betting bowls is so hard these days because of that. I, I would just say this. If I, <coughs> if I were going to make a bet on one thing or prediction, it's a Ohio State comes into this stadium incredibly fired up and against everything that's being reported. Don't make the assumption because four players opted out that the team that shows up on the field will not be sky high to play. I, I don't know if they're going to win the game, but I don't think they're going to be out there just like, ah, just out here playing the game. They're, when they come out here to compete, they're going to come out here with their hair on fire. What's the crowd here going to be? 60 40? I was Utah? about to ask you the same they, thing. I would think say, the break down would be. You think 70 30? I, think, I go 70 30. I don't know. 70, the bigger, fan, bigger fan base for yeah. Ohio State. Utah's yeah. closer. It is. Uh, Ohio State traveled to Mars. Yeah, well, and they, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fans. It's, it's, it's 60 40, 50 50, would be my guess. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.